for the Kohl Center as the Badgers host the Boilermakers in a key game for Purdue. The Boilers have lost two in a row in the closing seconds to Ohio State and Michigan State. So when you look at the Big Ten standings, if you're going to win the regular season, Purdue really would like to win out with four games remaining, including this one. But Robbie Hummel, Jason Benetti along with you, Purdue is still a one seed, according to Joe Lunardi, even with those two losses in conference play after a 19-game win streak. So, Robbie, why are they still a one seed in your book other than the fact that you played there? <laughs> Well, that is not the reason, but you look at the resume they've been able to put together, no bad losses. You look at the last two games, a lot of people are going to lose at the Breslin Center. The way they lose, Miles Bridges makes a big-time shot. The Ohio State game disappointing because you have a 14-point lead, end up blowing it, Kata Bates-D up with a nice tip-in, but still a lot to play for. They get it done on both ends of the floor. This team, to me, still has the, the look of a one seed. Vince Edwards, if they are going to be a one seed and go deep in the tournament, you would think has to be the guy that he was before he ended up with the flu for a week and a half. No, I mean, he has, he's a huge part of this team, and he's got to shoot the basketball better. 
Last two games, 26% from the field. Last five games, just 13% from three. A guy that needs to get it done from the perimeter. A lot of historical energy in this building tonight. Many Badger players from the past are here to honor Frank Kaminsky, whose jersey will be retired at halftime. So we'll see how Wisconsin comes out here at the Kohl Center as Aleem Ford, who's been shooting the ball very well, misses the opening shot. It's going to be so important for Wisconsin to get off to a good start tonight. They have struggled at home. Michigan down 15-2, Northwestern down 18-1. This is going to be Wisconsin basketball, but that Michigan game over the weekend, the Wolverines went out at halftime 44-22. Now, Wisconsin put up some big points in the second half, but that's not the point. No, and they were a different team in the second half. You saw a much more assertive Ethan Happ, and tonight they want to knock off this Purdue Boilermaker team. He is going to have to obviously be a huge part, but you got to get contributions from guys like Aleem Ford, Khalil Iverson, and Brevin Pritzel. That's a travel for Iverson, and you may recall if you saw the first meeting, it was very lopsided for Purdue. Hit a bunch of threes early in that game at Mackey Arena, and it was really a no contest. No, they got blitzed, and they turned the basketball over 20 times with their pace. Usually that's around a third of their possessions tonight. Got to take care of the basketball. Also got to make some shots. No double comes, and we have a foul called by Gene's territory on the back end from Haas. Gene just off his Super Bowl lot from a couple of weeks ago. Congratulations to him and his crew. Foul is on Hap, his first, and Isaac Haas will get you in foul trouble Yes, now. he will, and that's an interesting look right there. Ethan Hap, one-on-one. -on -one. We've seen the last two games, both Ohio State and Michigan State, allowing Isaac Haas to play without a double team. We'll see if Wisconsin sends different people from different looks throughout this game. How would you play Isaac Haas? I, I think that's the way. I, I think you do have to let him play one-on-one, -on -one, but you got to shut the perimeter down. You have to make sure Matthias, Thompson, Edwards, and Edwards do not get looks. But that's easier said than done. Here's Carson Edwards off the step back for two. He has been in such a rhythm, really, this whole season, but even the last two they've lost. But he's still averaging 21 points and five rebounds a game. Comes up a little curl there. So confident. Ten straight games of double figures for Carson Edwards, the only non-senior in this starting lineup for Purdue. Brevin Pritzel. And the offensive rebound for half. So far, Wisconsin is generating good shots. I mean, that is a good look. Ethan Half, he draws so much attention. Pritzel and Ford have to be ready to shoot at all times. Oh, he puts Haas in the blender and ties the game. Ethan Half has a lot of ability, and right there, goes to the package early. Beautiful spin move, gets to his right hand, and finishes. Kind of has point forward sort of qualities. No, he does. And you look at the way he spins, he does not look like a big. He looks much more like a guard. Catch and shoot, Carson Edwards, so dangerous, he has all five. Really, that's just too good a look. You cannot give him the type of space. He's a very confident player. You're going to lose track of him. It's going to be a long night. He had a 50-point game as a high school senior. In that game, he was 13 out of 15 from three-point range. He sees one go in, and it's on. We've talked about Ethan Happ, what he can do. Just right here, gets him going left. Beautiful spin right back to that right hand. Think about him, he can go both ways. He can go right, he can go left. He's got an up and under, he's got spin moves. He really has the total package in the post. Now Greg Gard's gonna try and steal a couple minutes for Nate Reavers, his freshman out of the state of Minnesota, in for a half for the moment. Khalil Iverson, who is now 0 for 23 from three this year. That is uncharted territory for Iverson as a foul down low away from the ball on the shot from Purdue and P.J. Thompson. It's on Reavers, that's his first. You thought he did a pretty good job in the first meeting. No, I did. He was in foul trouble, but he's got a lot of ability, and you look at him. He's a year away in the weight room from being ready for this matchup. Now, they need him to play because of that roster situation. I think he's going to be a very good Big Ten player. He's got a lot of skill, and he's battling. Nice save in the corner, and here comes Wisconsin and Ford.
Iverson and Haas rejects him. Transition for Purdue, Vince Edwards to the rack. Not very good transition defense there by Wisconsin at all. Vince Edwards, a guy at the fourth position, can take it off the glass and get it going in transition. They just never stop him. Have to stop the basketball. Really a missed opportunity. Cleo Iverson, honestly, you could solve that. You just got to make that layup. It's going to go against Wisconsin, so a Badger turnover. And that's the type of shot that can get Vince Edwards out of a little bit of a mini slump. Yeah, we, we talked about it with Carson Edwards. Just need to see it going once. Vince Edwards the same way. He's been through a lot of Big Ten basketball games. Very confident guy. You give a guy an easy one, you run the risk of letting him get his head up. Purdue's won four straight in this series after losing four in a row before that win streak. Haas against the returning half, and he missed it off the window. A really good defense there by half. Doesn't let Haas get too deep. Walls up, makes him score over the top of him. Half against Haas. Played against each other for a couple of years now, and Hap sized him up but couldn't finish. Dakota Matthias lost it on the way up, and a Purdue turnover. Matthias, a guy that also hasn't shot the basketball well as of late, just 35% in Purdue's last two games. He's been good from three, but not from inside the arc. What does Wisconsin need to go right tonight? Well, they to just, win? That's got to go in. I mean, that yeah. is a good offensive possession. You've got a guy that's shooting the basketball well. Good shooter. But he's got to make some. Think about that, Jason. It can be deflated. You, know, you, you have possessions where you work and you get a good shot. You see it continuously not go in as we see that's Vincent Edwards get to his right hand again. It can really deflate your team. Wisconsin needs to see one go in. We talked about the slow starts, and so far, another one here tonight. So it's Edwards' is nine, Wisconsin two. In the first five minutes and change here in Madison. Davison, who's been dealing with the bum shoulder, and now half decides to uncork a three. P.J. Thompson who really buried Wisconsin in the first meeting. He was four for five from three, and you'll take that shot no, every day. Uh, Wisconsin incredibly fortunate there. Thompson gets a great look. Have to feel really good about the way this game has started if you're a Purdue fan. So far, very efficient in the offense. Reverse layup is good for T.J. Schlunt, who had six points this calendar year coming into the game. Well, not a guy that has really scored the ball for this Wisconsin team, but any way you can get it right now to see that basketball go in and we'll see if that lid kind of comes off here. Purdue ball when we come back. Wisconsin getting some contributions from the bench early on. Nine for the Boilers. ESPN exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by BMW. We only make one thing. The ultimate driving machine and Travelocity. Wander wide. Jason Benetti, 11-year Boilermaker, Robbie Hummel. And look, people are defending Isaac Haas a little bit differently recently, right? No, they are. And we've seen Michigan State and Ohio State both go with the really stance that we are going to let him play one-on-one -on -one and, and make them a stagnant team. Purdue's offense, one of the best in the country. They, they really have moved the basketball. You see this from the Bahamas. You're going to trap Isaac Haas, and they're one of the best teams in the country at swinging this around the perimeter and finding these shooters for open jump shots. Here, it's going to be Carson Edwards, the beneficiary, knocks it down from the wing. As of late, we see Michigan State. It's going to be straight up one and one. And this is a good possession for them, too, because he's a guy that can score the ball. But look at the three to four, actually, defenders here as they are stagnant. Purdue is stagnant. Going to make Isaac Haas make a play, which he is very capable of doing. But Purdue, to me, is at its best when they are swinging that basketball around, moving that thing, and getting shots for everybody. That's why they've been so good from three-point range, 42-plus percent for the year. And you look at Isaac Haas's shot numbers in the last six games. Five of the last six games, he's 
been double figure field goal attempts and he only had done that four times in the first 21 games on the whole it just makes you a team that is so dependent on him to score the basketball and he's done that at a rate of around 57 percent but you have to think rim at the rim he shoots 60 on the year davidson off the kick out buries the three half did the work yes he did Goes in there, keeps the possession alive, and Brad Davidson able to knock it down, get this Cole Center crowd into this game. You know they want to be on Frank Kaminsky night. You know there's some energy to be had, and Carson Edwards tries to suck some of that out of the crowd with another tough shot. Well, he cuts so hard, and right there, the beneficiary of a great screen comes off. And really an answer here for this Cole Center crowd. How often do you see him not sprint off a screen? No, that, that's one thing he does extremely well. He is very good at not only using screens, but using them with pace. Hummel-esque, really. <laughs> I don't know about that. I, I was not running hard off screens like that. We did find out before the game that you still have your shooting touch, though. Ugh. During shoot-around, you're knocking down some Jays. <laughs> trying to. You love the Cole Center to shoot at. Even half got to go to work here. Got a freshman on him. Half second chance. Got it. Ethan half one of the best players in the Big Ten Conference. And if you're going to put a freshman on him, even if that freshman, a very good shot blocker, got to go right at him. Clock has stopped at 12.22. There's no whistle yet. And now the clock has restarted, so nobody's noticed. It's going to be a 20-minute and 15-second half or so. Now there's the horn and the whistle. And it's territory, Riley and Green will go over. Look. The Big Ten season ends early this year because of the conference tournament. So we're just trying to get as much Big Ten basketball as we can in February, honestly. <laughs> no, yes, we are. And these refs are going to take a look and see where this clock actually ends up stopping and how much they're going to put back on. It's going to be a pretty sizable amount, I'd say. Since we're watching, very good defensive possession I'm for counting. Wisconsin. Hang on. <laughs> One and done for Purdue. I'm trying to analyze here, man. Well, I'm trying to figure out how much time is left on the clock, which is more important. We're going to leave Humble. this to the rest, man. Okay. They are very good at their job. Leave it to them. What were you saying, though? I'm sorry. I interrupted you. No, it was a great defensive possession. Purdue's one and done. Keeping them off the glass. Forcing Vincent Edwards into a tough shot. Look, Wisconsin one for six to open the game from three-point range and they're within three at the 12-13 mark you would imagine Greg Gard would take that as a good sign oh no doubt I mean he is going to take that every day of the week you're right there with the number six team in the country haven't played well you've got some good shots haven't made them they need guys like Aleem Ford Brevin Pritzel and honestly you need Khalil Iverson to give you something offensively too he comes off his last two games two and three points now he had seven assists against Michigan but he has to be active, and he has to be a guy that contributes. You know, it's an interesting night for Greg Gard, because when we were talking to him before the game, he said, look, we've had to kind of reestablish our culture at points this season because they have lost so much with Vito Brown and Nigel Hayes and Bronson Koenig and Zach Showalter. A lot of those guys are in the building right now. So it, you almost, you have a piece of history here, and you'd like to combine that along with today's game and get yourself a win but uh, quite a bit of the culture change is actually here at the Kohl Center tonight because it's Frank Kaminsky night and you would think as a Wisconsin player that has to, to fire you up I would think you see these guys that have had so much success they've been to Sweet 16s have to think seeing them in the building has to be a motivational factor by the way we got under 12 so we're going to step aside All right. we'll be back in. Back to Madison, and don't forget, after our game, 9 Eastern or thereabouts, Arizona and Arizona State. Purdue's got a win against the Wildcats already this year. Arizona's won the last five of these and six of seven, including a win just before New Year's this year. That game's coming up. Dave Patch has extracted himself from Bill Walton for the night. He'll be with Fran and Molly. Stick around after Big Ten basketball. 
Dave's a saint, you know then? I work with Dave. He just does a great job. And he's the beneficiary of some Bill Walton games. That's true. You do a good Bill Walton impersonation. We'll get to at some point. <laughs> Wisconsin opened one for six from three. Brevin Pritzel can't change that for the good and the rebound for Edwards. Wisconsin runs a play for him there. Comes off a double screen, stagger action. Another good look, just unable to knock it down. Got to see some of these start to go for Wisconsin. You hung around, got to see him get some positive momentum. There's a confidence factor there, isn't it? No doubt. You have to think in this building, this crowd is ready to really get it going, but you got to give them something to cheer for. Haas out of the game, Harms defending half. Half set the screen, goes into Harms. A nice defense from the big freshman from Amsterdam. Really a stagnant possession for Wisconsin. Got to see that basketball move, shift that defense, and then allow Ethan Hack to go to work. No gel Eastern off the second chance and the miss from Klein. Ryan Klein, who they'd like to get a little bit more offense from in the coming days. Ford. Rough start from three. No, it's just there's a lid on that basket right now. Another good look. Very frustrating for Greg Gard's team. And defensively, they are getting stops. And oh, playing hard. Hap just swallows that shot. See, Brevin Prince has got to be ready to shoot that. I know he hasn't made him, but you have to be prepared. Not ready on the catch. The guy they need. He's a guy that sometimes lacks confidence from the three-point line. Yeah, he's missed a couple tonight already, and you can almost feel it in that non-take. Didn't want to shoot it. Davison does. Wisconsin 67 and a half points a game, 13th in the Big Ten, and just nine in the first half of this first. But you know what? Your defense has done a good enough job of keeping you in this basketball game. Have to figure you keep getting good looks, keep running good offense. You're going to get something going if you're a Badger. Klein travels, and there's more defense from the Badgers. Again, Purdue playing essentially every night to stay on the number one line for Matt Painter after back-to-back -back close losses. Purdue is still a one seed in the West, according to Joe. We see Villanova still a one seed. It went down last night. Life is hard college basketball, especially on the road. They've been dinged up, too. Yes, I mean, that's have. the one thing Purdue has had all year is the same starting lineup. One of three teams to get there this deep into the year. This is Big Ten football right now. Yes, it is. And again, a good shot. He gets to his spot, goes over Vincent Edwards. You like what Wisconsin's doing. Over the backboard. And Wisconsin basketball, 9 one to go in the first. 12 to nine in the 179th meeting between Badgers and Boilermakers. What was this rivalry for you? It was great. I, I mean, you look at the guys Wisconsin had, John Luer, Trayvon Hughes, Jordan Taylor, really good Wisconsin teams. I love playing in the Cole Center. This is a great building for college basketball. And when I was in college, and it still is today, a tough place to play, but nobody came in here and won. So it was always, one of my favorite places to play. A little chilly, though, with the ice. But the, the floor is freezing. <laughs> and our feet are feeling that right now. Klein, the trailer, missed the three. Someone will make a shot. <laughs> oh, again, another good look. Nobody able to make a shot right now. You said before the game, it's a pretty good shooting gym, right? I've always felt that it is. I mean, the sight lines are good. It's a very typical, almost pro-style arena. Good for me. <laughs> he says with a smile. I like shooting here. Half comes out after the fall. You like the substitution at 824. Get Ethan half some time because you're going to need him. Get yourself to the media timeout. Get him back in the game. Plays about 30 minutes a game. You have to wonder with him on the bench, though, Jason, who is going to score for this Wisconsin team and who's going to create. It's going to have to be Brad Davison. 
Very good defender, Matthias on him. Pritzel's open for the moment. He takes a long three and got it. Why not? Well, of all the looks that Wisconsin's had tonight, probably the toughest shot they've taken goes down. And right now, this game is tied. And he takes it away. Pretzel on Matthias to reverse. Confidence is a funny thing, Jason. You see that ball go through the rim, and all of a sudden, as a defender, you go out and make a play and get your team two points. 12-3 run for the Badgers. Matthias to this. Well, Matt Painter just kind of shrugged his shoulders. I'm not sure. Well, I'm, I am sure he did not like that shot from Dakota Mathias. Got to run some offense. Move that ball. Almost six minutes without a field goal for Purdue. And Haas the rebound. Offense has not gone through him. He's been out for a chunk of this first half. Have to think he is going to get a post touch on this possession. Against Reavers. Haas. The miss. You know, he's just off balance there. And when he's on balance, he's one of the best scoring bigs in the country. Right there, off balance, kind of hurried through his move. Gets to that right hand, but wasn't a good shot. See there, Reavers was shot ready, but he missed it. Brevin Pritzel didn't want to take a shot earlier. He does now. Well, Brevin Pritzel, confidence now flowing after hitting the 27-footer. You have to think, very good sign for this Wisconsin offense if guys not named Ethan Hass to get it going. Young will be involved in that game. <laughs> I would imagine, yes, he will probably play. One of the great players in college basketball you may not have heard of. <laughs> Dan's got a tough schedule down the stretch. Oklahoma and West Virginia remaining for the Jayhawks as they try to find themselves at the top of the Big 12 again. So Wisconsin, a couple of threes from Pritzel and Davison and leading 14 to 12. This is more of the Wisconsin defense that we've come to expect. I mean, we have traditionally seen teams that have guarded, kept games in the 60s. That hasn't been the case necessarily this year. They've all, they've honestly struggled at times. But tonight, they have made things tough for an offense that really is considered one of the best in all college basketball. Looked like that was going to be Hap's foul, by the way. They called it against Reavers, so that's his second. Hap only with one. By the way, we mentioned the West Virginia game. That's coming up Saturday. UNC Louisville, you'll be down there to see the cards and yes. heels. Fraternizing with the local media. <laughs> Always. Carson Edwards. And the rebound to Wisconsin. And another three-point shot. Off of no action, you, we've become so accustomed to seeing Purdue move the ball and get good shots through their offense. Right now, so much moving around, a lot of stagnant basketball being played. Half works his way in, ended up on the deck, and somehow Wisconsin's got the ball. Purdue has been rather lackadaisical in the first 15 minutes of this game, don't very, you think? Very lackluster performance. That's a basketball you have to come up with, have to secure it, get it going the other way. Edwards shows the double. Ford tried to make him pay. Lee Ford is third in the Big Ten in three-point shooting, and he's gotten good looks tonight. Have to think the shot Greg Gard likes, but got to start making it. Dakota Mathias tonight is looking for his own. Yes, he is. And another shot that kind of has Matt Painter shaking his head. Travel against half. Wisconsin turns it over. It's number four for the Badgers. A far cry from the 20 in the first meeting for Greg Gard in his second full season after taking over in December of 2015 for Bo Ryan, your former coach. World University Games, one of the best the Big Ten has seen. 
Haas with his first bucket after going 0 for 5 in the first game. And his first touch in quite some time. I mean, Purdue has not looked to the big fella. Have to think with his size advantage, got to get him more things going on the block. Davison got the three. You're Purdue, you want to bring that double team. Brad Davidson right there gonna make you pay. Nice swing, swing action. That basketball moving. And this Badger fan back in the game. Oh, half bailed on Haas. Davidson from Pritzel. Got it. A little defense, great offense. So far, so good for the Badgers. A little turnover action. Get yourself going. Three on one break. Good for Wisconsin. Obviously, coming off two losses, they've got to move the ball. The coach in the half court, it's a lot of dribbling, a lot of standing around, a stagnant offense, which is a talented group. Got to move the rock. Yeah, they don't look much different than they looked last week, and, and, and too many challenge shots. And what happens is Wisconsin wears you down by running a lot of movement offense, and then, then, then they're ending up taking a bad shot. But you got to come down and be a little bit more efficient on offense than what they are. Right now, Badgers have the lead. JB, back to you. Yeah, a lot of challenge shots. No, that was great. I mean, Purdue has taken now 21 shots, and I'm 20 of them have been contested. So Wisconsin's defense looking more like the Wisconsin defense of old. They've done such a good job of pushing Isaac Haas for the most part off the block, not allowing him to operate, making him uncomfortable, and really have been there on the catch for all of Purdue's perimeter players. Haas out of this play for the moment. Half fronts him and a block called against Wisconsin and Davison. There have been possessions where Haas not only has not been involved, but he's not even been on the strong side of the play. Well, Purdue has helped Wisconsin's defense, and you're right. He has not been on certain parts of plays, but they've taken some quick ones, and they've also taken some bad ones. And that has helped Wisconsin's defense, but you got to give credit to the Badgers. Thus far, they've done a tremendous job of making things tough. Look where Isaac Haas just caught that ball. He caught on the three-point line. Carson Edwards doesn't seem to care as he backs the three or tie. No, he doesn't. He knocks that three down off that dribble handoff and tells his teammates, give me the rock. I'm ready to get this thing going. He's a great equalizer for Purdue, isn't he? Well, he's a guy that can score in bunches, and he has no fear, no conscience. Sometimes that can be good, sometimes that can be bad. But he's a guy that can really get it going quickly. Foul on Davison, so back-to-back -back fouls against Brad Davison. Don't forget, Saturday, 6.15 Eastern on ESPN. Oh, one of those must-win games in the Big 12 we hear so much about. West Virginia and Kansas. That first meeting in Morgantown was an outstanding game. West Virginia had an early lead. Kansas came back with Devontae Graham. It's also on the ESPN app. Saturday primetime presented by AT&T. Who you got in that one? In Foggy on, I'm, I'm going Kansas. Me They've too. been bad there, but I, I think big game atmosphere. I think they get it done. Trying to chase down Texas Tech in that Big 12 ledger to try to win the league again. Half didn't have a lot of room underneath, and he still made it go. How many bigs in any conference are you going to see get in the paint, back it out, go between the legs, get back in the paint, stay with the play, and finish over a 7-2 guy? That is great work by Ethan Half, a guy that is so unique in his game, but also so productive. Purdue's season low in the first half is 31 points. They're not going to get there tonight, that's for sure. I, and that's how rare of a situation this is. Wisconsin playing tremendous defense. That they are, but we're going to go back to the other end and see Ethan Happ in his game on with the crossover dribble, staying with the play. Nice finish with the right hand. You said the, the Wisconsin defense, I mean, they have really packed it in. We see Dakota Mathias. 
Knocked down. Nice three off an inbound play, but they packed it in, made it tough on this Purdue team to get any sort of dribble penetration. Timeout Wisconsin as Time Mathias Wisconsin. ties the game for the fifth time. Purdue led 9-2. It's been all Wisconsin since then with 33 seconds to go in the half. Well, it's Frank Kaminsky night here at the Kohl Center, and there's some question as to whether or not either team's going to get to 44 <laughs> this Thursday yes, evening. Here are the Big Ten teams in right now. You just saw Nebraska a couple of days ago. First four out trying to get that fifth team in. They're an NCAA tournament team, but they don't have an NCAA tournament resume right now. And I think it's going to be interesting to see. God, they can win out and have 14 Big Ten wins. It's so hard to believe. If the committee's not going to take that into account, might not matter. Pritzel missed the three. Since the tournament expanded, no Big Ten team has missed the NCAA tournament with 12 league wins, so Nebraska's almost there. Pinball, and that'll do it for a gritty first half in Madtown. 21. 21, yeah, one of those Big Ten games. Gonna be a battle here. We'll see which team can make shots in the second half. Grindy, Adnan, Dallin, and Coach Green have the Alpha Romeo halftime report after this break. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight we celebrate Badger great Frank Kaminsky. On the north end of the court, we are pleased to be joined by his father Frank, his mother Mary, sisters Kaylee and Hannah, and grandmother Mary Lou. Also on the court are many of Frank's former teammates and coaches, Thank you all for being here. And now, please join us as we welcome one of the greatest student athletes to ever wear a Badger uniform, number 44. Frank Kaminsky. attention to the video board for a special presentation. impact of any Badger to ever come through the program. Yeah, I saw him come in as an 18-year-old senior in high school uh, and saw him grow into the best player in the country. So you look at how he evolved as a player, how he developed, I think that's he can be the poster child in terms of somebody that came in here with very few accolades but committed himself to developing and making that commitment to really wanting to be great. You know, he's probably as complete a player as I've ever been around, but how he developed and how he made himself into the player he was, I think is the, probably the most remarkable part of that story. My favorite part about Frank is, is just his exuberant personality. I look back to when he first came in as a freshman, and he's still that same kid. He's just got an energy around him that is, it's, it's attractive to be around. He's obviously an amazing player on the court, but off the court, he made us better with his personality, with his character, with his jokes. Um, and that kind of sprinkled through our whole program and made us what we were. He wanted to do everything he could possibly do with his teammates. And like that really, for all the, the hype he got, for all the spotlight he got, he 
really wanted to make it more about the team. And he understood and appreciated how important his teammates were to him and how important they were to his success. Frank drives on Dawson, right on the lane, goes to the paint, slam, dunk, and one. His senior year, just his confidence level and the mantra that he played with when he stepped on the court, he just knew he was the best player out there. He knew he was going to make his teammates better. And I think everyone kind of felt that. And it's, that's something you can't teach. He lifts the whole team up. And I think that's why they reached the levels that they did, because it started with, you know, their best player. Um, but he made everyone better, which is why he was so great. He wanted to be great. He didn't want to just be another player and be good. Uh, and I think he's kind of set the table that uh, this is what the level should be here. Uh, not only from a team standpoint, but also an individual. And if you can strive to be great, uh, it can happen. Ladies and gentlemen, Director of Athletics, Barry Alvarez. Thank you. Frank, we're all proud of all of your accomplishments. You and your teammates over there gave us a lot of thrills. <laughs> to show our appreciation, we will raise your jersey, number 44, to the Raptors. We're, we're, it will permanently stay. Congratulations, Frank. Oh, man. I don't even know how to do these speech things. I'm, uh, I'm a little bit nervous, so I'm going to try to get through this. Um, you know, when I came to this... <laughs> hey, shut up up there! You know, when I came to this school, I, I used to always tell myself, do something you can be proud of. Just work. And at the end of the day, do something you can be proud of. And I'm, I'm proud to be standing here tonight being able to tell you all how much I accomplish, but not only me. You know, when I see that banner go up there, I don't think of myself. I think of all my teammates who have been so supportive. <laughs> These guys. They've become like family to me. I mean, you can just see it. I mean, except Josh, but... Um, they, they, without them, you know, I don't know if I would have been the player that I was at this school and been the player that I could be here. So thank you guys from the bottom of my heart. Thank you. I also, I think of the coaching staff who took in a kid, very immature, gave him an opportunity, although he might have not have deserved it early on, and they turned me into a man. 
They turned me into the person that I am today. Everything that I am or that I will be started at this school. So I have to say thank you for the coaches for giving me that opportunity. I have to say thank you to my friends that were up there that have been screaming. <laughs> they, they are the l biggest lovable idiots that you could possibly ever have around you. Those guys have been there from day one when I was a 6'2", squeaky voice freshman who, if a girl would have saw me, would have ran in the other direction. They've been there through, through all of it, and I have to say thank you to them. And most importantly, I have to say thank you to my family. You know, my mom, my dad, my sisters, and my grandma. But not only just them, the rest of my family, too. They've been there through the ups, the downs, the highs, the lows. They never told me what I should do, let me follow my dreams and let me be my own person. They, they let me be the goofball idiot. They never told me what to do. They always told me, be who you are and be confident in that. And for that, I have to say thank you. And last but not least, I have to say thank you to all of you in here, all the fans across Wisconsin. You guys are the best. You guys are the best fans in the country without question, constantly supporting me even after I've let this left this school. The support you showed while we were here, during our runs, during the teams we have, and ever since I left has been amazing. So, my name and my number might go up there tonight, but there's a story behind it, and there's so many people behind it that I have to say thank you to. So I'd like you all to give one last big round of applause for all these people that I've mentioned and for all of you for yourselves, because without all of you, I wouldn't be standing here tonight. Thank you. On Wisconsin. Twenty-one all at halftime. Three touchdowns each. Purdue withstood an eight and a half minute drought in the first half to still end up in a deadlock in that first half. Jason Benetti, Robbie Hummel along with you. And uh, what did we just see in 20 minutes there? Well, not good basketball. Both teams shooting below 40%. I thought Wisconsin's offense got some decent looks. Purdue's offense, a little stagnant. Need to get it going here in the second half. Let's take a look at both teams' plan for success. It's brought to you by Northwestern Mutual. Yeah, and I think as we go through this game, you have to think with Purdue's offense. They haven't looked comfortable. Wisconsin's pushed them out a little bit. Good thing is for Matt Painter's team, they have more players than the Dallas Cowboys. And we've seen them run a lot of misdirection action where the action looks like it's going one way and it actually ends up going into the post for Isaac Haas. He has been uncomfortable. Wisconsin's done a good job. Only trapped him three times, but pushed him off the block and made things difficult for him. They've sent a few different looks. Credit Ethan Happ for doing a good job on the big fella. Name a Division I school that has football and basketball that has more plays combined between its football coach, Jeff Brom, and right, Matt I'm Painter. Not, I'm not sure you can. And we're going to see one right here set to get Isaac Haas the basketball. And again, Ethan Happ doing a tremendous job denying and getting the steal. A little dribbling from Happ, too. Now he can do that. He can really handle the ball for being a center. Brad Davison had eight in the first half of the 21 for Wisconsin. Cap had six. 
Hap had the mismatch. And Vince Edwards held the line. And got it right to the rim. A good look. He struggled tonight. He's now 3 of 12. Have to think. But you know what? If you tell Greg Gard your best player is going to go 3 of 12 and you're going to be in this ball game, he'd be, he'd be like, no way. I mean, there is no chance without him playing at a high level. But credit Wisconsin for doing just that. For Purdue, what's at stake is likely a one seed line, at least for now. They have three games left in the regular season. Penn State Sunday at Illinois next Thursday and then home for Minnesota before the Big Ten tournament. Half scores and ties it again. Just a disappointing defensive possession for Purdue. You throw a 20-foot bounce pass through the lane? I mean, that should never happen if you're to the basketball. And Purdue just not impacting this game on the defensive end of the floor. So much un Purdue like stuff going on in the first 22 minutes, don't you think? Looked a little undisciplined, a little sloppy, not been the team that we've seen thus far throughout the season. They won 19 in a row before the back to back losses to Ohio State and at Michigan State last weekend. Half scanning. Goes into Haas, nearly traveled, and Haas wins that one. Right, the cop did a good job not going for that fake. Stays down, builds a wall. And when he does that, he's incredibly difficult to score over. Oh, Pretzel tips it out of bounds. It was right there with him. And Purdue will have it, but the Boilers, number six in the country right now, is still a one seed according to Joe Lenardi, and you search for bad losses for this team. Western Kentucky is as much as you're going to find, but that's not a bad team either. No, they, they've done well in their conference this season. Very solid resume for Purdue. However, these last few games, we are starting to see a trend of just not making shots. Last five games, they shot 33% from three, and tonight, just 30 again. But really what concerns me, Michigan State, they got some good looks. They haven't had great looks tonight that they've been able to generate out of their offense. A typical Purdue ball movement hasn't been there for part of this night as well as Edwards does it himself this time, Vince Edwards. And any more of that. That's just Vince Edwards making something out of nothing and going and making a play with his right hand. That's the Vince Edwards this Purdue team needs. One of four seniors in the starting lineup for Purdue, Carson Edwards, the only non-senior a sophomore. We got P.J. Thompson guarding Nate Reavers. And Will Iverson out there knocking down the jumper. It was a two, though. He's yeah. still over for the <laughs> year from three, but that's his first point of the night, Khalil Iverson. That's record-setting stuff where he is in terms of the number of threes he's taken that he hasn't made one this year. And there's a foul called against Reavers. That's his third personal defending Haas. I have to like the physicality that Isaac Haas brought to the game right there. Nate, Nate Reavers, a guy that cannot handle Haas's size on the block. And you see him dislodge him there. They got him. Yeah, he, he reaches in. That, that's a good call by this. Yeah, but Robbie, the shooting crew. Al alternatively, what about that arm bar in your neck as he's posting you up? I thought Reavers got him initially with the dislodge, and then Haas goes back and fouls him, and they get him on the third one. So you thought it should have been a foul on initially. Reavers initially? Yes. He's a tough guy to officiate. I mean, he is just so big, and I don't think a lot of these guys have ever seen a player like him. They have really struggled to officiate. Who would you compare him to that you've played against? Anybody? Honestly, no. It, I mean, you look at, like, 90s basketball. If this is the 90s and the Knicks are starting, like, Patrick Ewing and Anthony Mason and Charles Oakley at the 3, 4, and 5, he's that type of center that you'd bring in to bang with him. I, I don't think I've ever... Even the NBA, the big centers are Andre Drummond, DeAndre Jordan. He's, he's, there's not many guys like him. I thought you were going to say George Murison, one of your <laughs> acting <laughs> favorites. Play with George Murison. <laughs> I did watch My Giant, though, as a kid. Yeah, quite a bit. I'm sure. <laughs> Six to shoot for Davison. He pulls the trigger and missed everything. By the way, we're scheduled to be joined by Frank Kaminsky coming up shortly. We'll get a close-up look at his uh, red suit that he had custom-made for it tonight. And after our game, 9 Eastern, 8 Central, the Pac-12, Arizona, and Arizona State, both of them ranked. 
Purdue with a win against the Wildcats earlier this year. That one coming up when we are done right here on ESPN. Haas is working out his hand over on the sideline. Harms in for Haas. Carson Edwards finds himself open and cashes in. Not very good defense there by Wisconsin on a night where they've been so good all night. Just a little dribble handoff action for Carson Edwards. Their defense gets lost, have to stay connected to his hip, cannot allow him any free space because he's so comfortable coming off the screens or handoffs. Double comes from Carson Edwards. Hemp scores and a foul. Tie ball game at the Kohl Center, and you know one guy who's happy about the effort from the Badgers, Frank the Tank's going to join us for this custom-made red suit. It's Kaminsky night. Back here to the Kohl Center, and it's a big night for number 44, Frank Kaminsky. Watching his number go up as he sits with us. Uh, Frank Kaminsky, one of the greats all time here at Wisconsin. So your number is going up in the Raptors. Where's your mind at that point? Um, all over the place. Uh, I've been thinking about what I was going to. I couldn't even. We played in Orlando last night, and I got back last night and had to fly this morning. I didn't. I couldn't sleep last night because I was thinking about the, the two-minute speech that I was going to have to make. That was what I was most nervous about. I was thinking about that the whole time when I walked out. I'm like, please don't make me make this speech. What did Wisconsin mean to you? Because you were talking about how immature you said you were when you first got here. What did Wisconsin do for you? It, it started before I got to Wisconsin. Um, you know, I struggled in high school. I, I, I had a, I had a lot to grow up. I, I, you know, not only physically but mentally. You know, I was a troublemaker in high school. Um, you know, I needed guidance, um, and, and that's when my high school coach really stepped in and really vouched for me. Um, he really sold me to a lot of these schools. You know, not a lot of schools wanted to offer me a scholarship. So when I got to Wisconsin, I felt like I had a lot to prove. Um, you know, I was still growing into myself, both physically and mentally. But I mean, this this school challenged me from the second I got on campus and challenged me in the ways that I needed to be challenged. And, and it made me into the man that I am today. And, and and that's what you want. You know, that's what my parents hoped for when I was picking a school. And that's what. You know, I, I love the most about this place is that it turned me into the person that I am today and will be going forward. So I have to ask, you're drafted by Charlotte, obviously Michael Jordan owns the team. What is your best MJ story? He, he gambles on, <laughs> on the weirdest things. It was, not surprising to hear. I think we were, in the, we were in the locker room last, or the, the, the training room last year, and I was getting treatment before the game, and he was sitting in there. And I think West Virginia was playing, and West Virginia was up like 15. He's like, oh, I bet West Virginia only goes in, goes into the half up seven. I was like, okay, I'll take that bet. I was like, I'll bet you five bucks. And West Virginia goes into the half up by 22 or something like that. It wasn't even close. He was so mad that he lost the bet too. For five dollars? For five dollars. I think he can spare it. Yeah, he'll be okay. I, I also want to ask you, you know, it's cool to see all your teammates out there. And I know just from playing, when you play with a group of guys, and you have success and you're able to, to be around those dudes. How cool is it to be able to share that moment today where you're with them? Because really, there's nothing like playing in college. There's nothing better than that. I'm sure it had to be pretty cool for uh, I think it says a lot about our program, you know, and where we were at that time. You know, it was, it was a brotherhood. You know, we were here for four, three, most of the people three plus years. Um, and to have them come back and be so supportive and I mean, it's it's just it's it's everything I ever wanted. You know, this school was everything I ever wanted it to be, and more. You know, it, it ex exceeded my expectations not only basketball-wise, but you know, the friends that I've made and the people that have become like family to me. I mean, I just don't know how to describe it. You know, those are those are my best friends, and they're going to be around in my a big part of my life. You know, for as long as I can dare to think. You describe some of your friends as a bunch of idiots. Oh yeah, oh yeah. My friends sitting up in the suites up there. They know who they are. They, they, see, here's the thing about my friends. They they know that they're idiots, but they're the most loyal idiots in the entire world, and I couldn't ask for better friends than them. Hey, tell us about this coat because it has like your jersey inside of it. Yeah, Is that right? On the back. Yeah, it has my my jersey printed on the inside. How about that? That's pretty yeah. rock and Taylor. Yeah. Yeah, he did a good job. I got to give out give a shout out to my guy at ES, ESQ in Chicago. Uh, he did it right for me.
So speaking of, by the way, speaking of, I know you're a big White Sox fan, right? Huge. And so some people that are friends of mine on the south side heard about your jersey retirement, okay? And they wanted to give you something. So I've got something for you on your 44 night. Oh my goodness. Uh, it's an 83 White Sox replica jersey with Kaminsky on it. That's awesome. 44. So that that's is yours. awesome. <laughs> this one's getting hung up. Yeah? Absolutely. I, I guarantee you, I bring this back up to, into the suite, and my dad takes it instantly and doesn't give it back. Are you serious? That's my dad's thing now. He comes and he takes all of my stuff and doesn't ask, about, ask for it. He just takes it, and, and, and I'll see him wearing like a coat or something of mine. Like a month later, he'll be, he'll be like, oh, or I'll say, where'd you get it? And he'll be like, oh, I just took it out of your closet. Well, thanks for asking. So this this is going to be one of those things. <laughs> it's a legit 83 uh, Sunday this is jersey awesome. for Very you. Cool. How about that? This is awesome. Yeah, good to have friends on the south side, right? Absolutely. So what's it like being back here for you? Like, what, what are you feeling right now? I feel awesome. I, you know, I love being back here. You know, I, here's the thing. I spent so much time on this campus. I spent the better part of all four, all four of my years here on campus at the school. So I know everything there is to know. Obviously, there's some new apartment buildings and stuff like that. But, you know, this is... Just how loud and how crazy this arena is right now it just brings back so many memories. It gives you chills, right? It does. Yeah. It really does. No place like home, that's for sure. The question is, what is the final score going to be, though? <laughs> Can they even get to your jersey number right now? Are they going to get to 44? That might be first team to 44. Takes this thing 12 home. 12 minutes left, 32 to 29. I mean, I mean that's that's. I mean. You know, when I went into the league, the rep about Wisconsin basketball is that they play a low-scoring game, so I guess this is right on par. <laughs> What's your NBA experience been like? It's been great. Um, you know, I, I've gotten the opportunity to meet a lot of people, do a lot of awesome things, and, and play basketball. Uh, you know, the game I love. So who's the guy that you've played against and you've been like, oh, man, I played uh, against that guy? LeBron. Yes. I mean, I grew, I remember LeBron getting drafted. You know, obviously, now I play with Dwight Howard, and he was another guy that I can remember getting drafted. Um, you know, I remember all the hype around him. So it's pretty crazy that the guys that I saw growing up and guys I idolized when I was a kid, now, you know, I've had the opportunity to even play with some of them. Who you got tonight? You got the Badgers coming back oh, here? Yeah. How could he not? Of course he's going to well, take I, that. Look, look, I was giving him an opportunity. We got to we gotta even this out. We got a Purdue guy who was there for 15 seasons sitting next to and him. So. And, and it's funny. You know, one of my one of my really good friends that sits up there, he was the Purdue Pete mascot. Oh, for, nice. Out right. of five years. So he was coming to this game regardless before he heard that, you know, my jersey was being retired. And he has gotten so many bad looks and everything. It's crazy. Frank, great pleasure getting to chat yeah, with you. Yeah. Enjoy Thank the you, night. Congratulations, yes. man. Frank awesome Kaminsky cool. here at the Kohl Center. His number up in the Raptors for good. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by the 2018 Lexus ES and ES Hybrid. See your Lexus deal. As you're going to see in the Big 12, Oklahoma and Kansas getting together on Big Monday. It's a sonic blockbuster. Trey Young versus Devontae Graham as the Sooners try and figure out how to steady their footing. It's been a struggle recently to get in the win column as Pritzel has to fight for this loose ball. Six to shoot. Half on Haas. Double comes to the steal for Eastern. And the whistle goes against Wisconsin. They get two and a foul. Well, you know what, Jason? That was Purdue's best defensive possession of the night. No gel Eastern applies pressure to Brad Davis in the whole way up the floor. They send the double to Ethan Half, ends up turning the basketball over, use that defense, make some offense. Something you gotta do in these grinding out games when you're not necessarily in any sort of flow, but you can get yourself going in transition. You know it. This is the type of game that can happen in the NCAA tournament. No doubt, and it can happen in, in we are in February now. You're getting into the grind of that season. It can happen throughout your season as well. There are games that you have to just grind through and you have to win if you're Purdue. If you're Wisconsin, you've got a huge opportunity here. Need to take advantage of it in the last 10 minutes. 
Nogel Eastern playing significant minutes here in the second half for Purdue. Defensively, he brings an aspect to this team that not many other guys can. Very good defender, can apply pressure, and you're going to see him hawking Brad Davis and bringing the ball to the floor. He created the foul there against Iverson, the offensive foul against Wisconsin. And we talked about it in the open. Teams are defending Purdue differently. The double has not come much against Isaac Haas tonight. Well, yeah, this is what teams are saying is the new blueprint to guard this Purdue team. You're going to let them play one-on-one. -on -one. You see single coverage on 19 of those points. He's going to be able to go to work, but... Need to get him the ball more. You, you see so much right now. It's been a lot of Carson Edwards. Need to find the big guy. You know Purdue has so many sets to get him going. Where does it need to come from? Where, what do you want to see from Purdue to get the ball into the post? You, it can't just be a post feed. It has to be action where you move the basketball from side to side. Maybe a little, they, they're so good. I said it earlier in the night. They're so good with the misdirection where they run somebody off the screen and then run another guy out the backside and you get it to Isaac Haas. And he wanted the lob right there. Now he's got Bremen Pritzel. Have to get it to him. We're going to get a foul against Wisconsin and it's Pritzel down low. Third on Pritzel. Davison has three as well. So does Reavers. And this is going to be a one and one. Matt Painter was signaling. Pritzel, by the way, is six foot three. Isaac Haas is seven foot two. It's not the easiest guard. No. But he, it's not an easy guard for anybody. If I was to go stand next to him, I'm six eight. I feel like a midget. I mean, he is so big. He, he really makes you feel small. That was just the second free throw attempt of the night for either team. One for two, rebound for a half. Seven in a row for Purdue. How does Wisconsin break it? I would expect to see Ethan Happ. It looks like Wisconsin going to run some swing here. Trying to move the ball from side to side, run that patented offense. Tough shot for Davison. And now the Purdue defense has cinched it up. Eastern bumped and he scores. Well, no gel Eastern struggles have been well documented this year. Hasn't shot the basketball great, has struggled from the free throw line. But right now, he is giving great minutes to Matt Painter's team. And here in transition, just kind of takes Brevin Pritzel right into that paint. Beautiful right hand finish. This guy with a lot of ability. Highly ranked coming in as a freshman, showing his worth here tonight in Madison. He was number 78 in the ESPN 100, and he just drew the fourth foul against Brevin Pritzel. So Schlunk back in for Wisconsin, and Purdue has scored 10 in a row. Big possession here for Wisconsin. You think you're going to try to ISO Ethan Happ? Well, actually, Greg Gar going to talk it over. That's a good timeout. Boilermakers have struggled through the offense at points tonight. They lead by seven, their largest. Big 12 regular season title is on the line essentially every game for the Kansas Jayhawks now with a couple of losses they'd like to have back. And for Matt Painter's Boilermakers, a chance still to win the Big 10 regular season title, but you basically have to run the table, you would imagine. You would think so. It's going to be tough sledding for them. Ohio State with some tough road games. Tie with Michigan State right now in the loss column. A lot of games left, though. Wisconsin more than three minutes without a point. Happ was fouled on the reach in, and he scores. Ethan Happ showing off the footwork and operating in the crowd. Dakota Mathias had turned his back to Khalil Iverson and essentially gone down to double team half. Really just a patient move. Shows the footwork off nice up and under. Draws the foul and what an answer here for this Wisconsin offense. I want to ask you because half basically lost his whole group, right? A bunch of guys graduate. You were in a similar situation at Purdue. What's that like? It's tough. You know, I when I got injured, we had a team with Etuan Moore, Juwan Johnson, Chris Kramer, Keaton Grant. When I came back, none of those dudes 
We're still on the team. We got a foul on Wisconsin on that bullet pass, by the way. Wow, I'm shocked that was a foul. Yeah. That's, I don't know about that one. But, no, when I came back, none of those guys were there. So you come back to a new team, that's kind of what Ethan Happ has gone through. But you got to give him credit. Has not made excuses. Knows he's kind of, he, well, he's not kind of, he is the main option at this point. And he knows that every night he has to bring a great effort for this team to have a chance in, in Big Ten games, especially against the upper echelon teams. And suddenly you're the old guy. I know, man. It's, it's getting sad. No, no, no. I'm not saying now. I'm saying like then. Oh, yeah. You were around. <laughs> right. No. I do say mean things, but I didn't mean it then. No, I thought you were being mean. You're right. Yes, you become <laughs> the old guy. And Ethan Happ has become that guy for this team. Thank you for helping my reputation there. <laughs> to precede you. Uh-huh. Aaron Mesh. Senior is checked in. He's got the post feed for Hap. Double oh, comes him. from yep. Klein. Mace oh. missed it on the doorstep on a whistle. Got to convert that. But that is such a good job by Ethan Hap. Staying with it, seeing the double team, not losing his cool, keeping his head up, and finding the cutting Mace. He was right at the rim. Those are buckets that you're great guard and you're a Wisconsin Badger fan. You just think, man, got to have those. What a skilled passer Ethan Great Happ is. Just a good player. And a, a player that really we have not seen anybody like. I, I'm not sure who he compares to. And I say that as a compliment. There's not a lot of guys that wouldn't shoot the ball well from the perimeter and still be able to operate the way he does, especially in crowds. He doesn't really have that ability to play off of a closeout. People don't close out to him super hard. He doesn't make threes like that. Hey, he's got one three one three on, on the year. Yeah. So, he does that by changing pace, changing directions, and with his handle, he can do that. Matthias, catch and shoot. One and done for Purdue. Wisconsin hanging around. Half wanted to pass. And Wisconsin settles in. Half well off the block. Eastern comes on the double and he raked it away. Eastern gets the block. Two free throws for Purdue and no gel Eastern when we come back in a tight one. Also in standing, Jason Benetti. Oh, thanks, buddy. Adnan's been running around the studio yelling Frank the Tank all night in honor of Kaminsky. Uh, Rob Gray, by the way, for Houston, one of the best scorers you probably haven't seen. He can really fill it up. Not that you haven't seen him. I'm talking <laughs> to people at home. I no, know he, he, watch a lot of he can get buckets. He is impressive. No gel Eastern has played important minutes tonight for Purdue. No, he has. He's changed the game. He came in here. And he's doing it right now. Going to pressure Brad Davison, who is a shooting guard by nature. Going to pressure him 94 feet. And he has gotten steals. He's forced Wisconsin to be uncomfortable. Really came in and made an impact on this game defensively. And then used that to get his offense going. Now Carson Edwards is right in Davison's pocket with six to shoot. Illa Kanan in, Aleem Ford late in the shot clock, the miss, and an offensive rebound for Iverson. Purdue so fortunate there. Ford has not shot the ball well tonight, but a guy that shot it well in the season, and they full rotate there and leave him wide open. Ford just one of seven on the night. It's been a struggle. Again, late in the timer. Screen from Illa Kanan. Davison is fouled on the way up with four to shoot. Well, that's what you got to do if you're Brad Davison. No Jell Easter wants to come in and heat you up. You got to take him right to the rim. He does just that. Nice crossover dribble move. Get in that paint. Get yourself a foul. Get to the line. Here it is. Eastern gets shook by that crossover. Nice play by Brad Davison. Kind of had the look of the former high school football quarterback, which he was. You never played in football, did you? Eighth, eighth grade, I was, I was bad. <laughs> it didn't go well. 
People are going to make T-shirts. Eighth grade, I was bad. Robbie Hummel, football <laughs> T-shirts. Uh, All-Star Weekend Friday in Los Angeles. That's why Kaminsky can be here tonight. 7 Eastern ESPN has the celebrity game. Rachel Nichols, Tracy McGrady, Michael B. Jordan have Team Lakers. Katie Nolan, Paul Pierce, and Common have Team Clippers. You can also watch it on the ESPN app. Suddenly, this is a four-point game again. Purdue has lost two in a row. Carson Edwards, tough shot, my goodness. That is great defense by Clay Iverson. You cannot do it any better, but just better offense by Carson Edwards. That's a tough bank shot off the window. You gotta just tip your cap to him on that. If you're Khalil, you know that you did the best you could. He's gotta be so frustrating to defend. No, he, he just, he's got a lot of ability. You know, he's a guy that can really score the basketball, and right there, he showed you. Half great pass. Ford was fouled by Harms. It was close to a clean block. Two free throws coming on the fourth foul against Harms, the redshirt freshman. You can have, man. What a great find. I mean, Purdue defended that pretty well. He got caught in the air a little bit. Probably was starting to feel that uh oh feeling when you get up there and luckily found Aleel Ford cutting in at the last minute. I don't know how he saw him, Robbie. No, it was a great pass. What you lose there with Harms in foul trouble is the ability to sneak a couple of minutes for Isaac Haas. Haas just eight points. Only five shot attempts. We talked about it earlier. He's had double digit shot attempts the last four or five games. Right now, isolation for him, going to that right jump hook. That's his comfortable spot, and he missed it. Pretty good look. I to think you're okay with that if you're Matt Painter. Wisconsin, they have hung around tonight. They are right there. Again, you talked about being shot ready. Ford was not. Half goes to work. It's a two-point game. Is so quick. I mean, he, he can just get by big guys and use that ball handling ability to score the ball in ways that not many big guys can. And here's this Badger crowd again, trying to get their team to get another stop. Carson Edwards wanted to shoot, didn't, and half a one-armed rebound. They got numbers. Davison. Frank loves it, tie game. Well, Brad Davidson had a really pretty good shot, but he gave that up and he got a great shot. He finds Khalil Iverson right at that rim. And right now, Wisconsin's offense really effective. We're gonna see Ethan Half go to that spin move, spin cycle on Isaac Haas, gets to his left hand, and then Brad Davidson, nice little pass into Khalil Iverson who gets his big man going with a dunk. Feels like Camp Randall in here right now, and Purdue trying to avoid that third straight loss. Last time they did that as a last time anybody did that as a one seed with a three-game losing streak was 2013, and Purdue try to hang on that one line under Joe Lenardi's bracketology right now. Well, we've seen it all year in college basketball. You go on the road in conference play, and life is not easy. Right now, you see the number six-ranked Purdue Boilermakers with all they can handle here up at the Kohl Center. That's gonna be an offensive foul against Purdue. First foul on Haas. We're gonna see Wisconsin's defense pull behind there on Carson Edwards. Man, that is like getting hit by a freight train. That's a big boy right there. He can clean you out now. Yes, he can. Pritzel on the floor with four fouls, 10 to shoot. Isaac Haas has done a nice job denying half the ball. Got him some pick and pop action, but Davidson gonna make a play. Stripped and fouled, it's on Carson Edwards. 
And he'll get two shots. Davison will. He just felt this wave of momentum, and it's absolutely shifted. Purdue almost felt like they had this game in control just two or three minutes ago. But credit Wisconsin, they've come roaring back. And now, two free throws with a chance to take the lead. For a young man who's dealt with a bum shoulder for the balance of the season, Brad Davison. A very good free throw shooter. This dude has taken 30 charges. <laughs> that has to lead college basketball or be in the vicinity. That's more than one a game. With his shoulder, got hit. He's got Coach Guard said two hit pointers. I mean, you talk about tough. This dude's a gamer. Right there. Gives the team a two-point lead. 8-0 run Wisconsin. Ethan Half, veteran move, pull that chair out from underneath Isaac Haas. And Wisconsin again forces a turnover. Those two guys know each other so well. They know the whole playbook. Yeah, no, I mean, it, it's it's been a battle. I've seen Ethan Half and Isaac Haas go up against each other so much over the last few years. We're going to see it again right here because we're going to get a healthy dose of Ethan Happ and we're going to get a healthy dose of Isaac Haas. Which big will do it for his team, Happ and Haas, in a two-point game under four to go. Twenty to go. A great game at the Kohl's Center, JB. Yeah, we'll get out to the uh, Valley of the Sun in a little while. 45-43 as it stands right now. That's a big win possibly for Temple, by the way. Could propel them into the tournament. Really no lose with Wichita State being such a good win. As half works on Vince Edwards. Two to shoot. He got it in. Such a tough move right there by Ethan Half. Gets the switch. The smaller Vince Edwards there and takes advantage with a beautiful left hook. What's this possession look like? I think it's got to be Carson Edwards. Have not seen much from him, but it's going to be Vince and Carson in the corner. Vince draws a whistle in the paint. Just six points tonight for Vince Edwards. The shot clock winding down. Ethan Happ using that size, taking his time. Nice little lefty hook. So talented in that painted area. He has had a very, very good second half. Ethan Happ is right now a point away from 11th place on the Wisconsin scoring list and Frank Kaminsky this Kaminsky night. How'd you like to get passed on the scoring <laughs> list when your jersey's retired? It'll only be appropriate. Not sure everybody in the building will know the occasion is coming, but pretty cool on that night. Davison, too strong, and that's going to be a foul against Wisconsin, and Ethan Happ's fourth. That's a needless foul. No, it is, and it's a tough one. You're going to send Purdue's offense 94 feet down to the foul line. Brad Davison, he got the ball to the rim. Really a breakdown in Purdue's pick-and-roll defense. But it's tough. Four fouls on Ethan Happ. Have to think that Nate Reavers is at the scores table. He's going to give Happ... A little bit of a breather here. Half with four, Pritzel with four, Reavers has three. And Haas, 77% for the year, the miss. And don't forget, 11 Eastern on ESPN and the ESPN app after Arizona State in Arizona. Linda Cohen, Kenny Main, tell you about DeAndre Ayton and how he might translate to the NBA. Some top plays of the NBA's first half, and then Tiger reacting to his round. Welcome back, Tiger. And the free throw good for Haas. So a one-point game. Last three for Purdue. This is where Wisconsin going to really have to manufacture offense. They're going to run their swing. No Ethan Happ. It's going to rely. It looks like here now going to be Brad Davison ball screen action. Got to make a play. Step back. Davison long jumper. He has shown all season that he is comfortable stepping back, especially going to his left hand. 
but I'm not sure he's made a step back jumper any bigger than that one. Hassan Reavers. And we're going to get a foul against Reavers. That's his fourth. Hey, Reavers looking like, what else can I do? And on the other end, Brad Davison. Beautiful step back. Look at the space he creates. So good right there. Using that push off with that right leg. You see so many guys that step back, they don't go anywhere. Right there, he got away from Carson Edwards, and that's why he's able to get that jumper off. Yeah, there's an idea behind the move, there's not just to look good. Yeah. Young man who's very important to this Wisconsin program as it tries to grow out of what looks like its first missed NCAA tournament since 1998, unless something changes dramatically. Half on the floor with four personals. Pritzel as well. Haas gave some ground. Half scores! He's taking Isaac Haas to school right now with this footwork. And that is another big time move by a big time player in a huge situation. He just passed Frank Kaminsky on the all time scoring list and Bronson Koenig. Now 10th. Iverson right there with Edwards. And he blocked the shot. That is so big time by Khalil Iverson. Carson Edwards coming off the triple screen. Stays right there with him and then blocks his shot when he tries to pull in his face. And Eastern with the wrap up of Hap, who's not a good free throw shooter. Rarely does Carson Edwards see somebody so close to him off no. the screen like that. I mean, Khalil Iverson did everything right right there. He trailed him right on his hip, was in his grill, and when he went to pull, Iverson uses his size and blocks his shot. That foul was with intent. Yes. And this is the one aspect of Ethan Half's game where you have to think it's just not there. I mean, you're going to shoot around 50% from the free throw line at the end of games. Just makes it that you're almost a liability to be on the floor. 0 for 2 for Half. P.J. Thompson scoreless tonight. Dakota Mathias has been super quiet. Two points. There is a battle going on down low. Edwards scores. That's just a big time move. Vincent Edwards right there. Using the spin move. A lean forward. Had nothing for him. Half tried to give it up, but the foul came from Thompson. Thompson is second. And that's just some level of awareness a little bit too late. He wanted to discard it, but it was after the foul. Hap has the first. Will it be a three game losing streak for Purdue? One minute to go. Purdue's so dangerous. So many guys that can hurt you right here. Look for some screening action. But for Dakota Mathias. There he is. He missed it. And Iverson the rebound. Davison, an 80% foul shooter. Do you play defense or foul here? I'm getting a stop. If I'm coaching, I'm, I'm playing to stop Wisconsin on this play. Ritzel, 84% from the foul line. 30 seconds to go. And they're going to get a foul against Haas, holding Hap to send Hap to the free throw line. Matt Painter is frustrated as we take a look at the Wendy's wooden watch. Purdue, three points down here as we look at our Wendy's Wooden Watch for the night. Carson Edwards, Vince Edwards, Kata Bates-Diop, Bridges from Michigan State. 
Two guys involved in this game as Half tries to salt it away. And the first run good. You said Matt Painter frustrated. That, that's an understatement. I mean, you just ran off the shot clock down to 10. I know Half isn't the best free throw shooter, but at that point, you can stop the ball at half court. Yeah, the window is closed yeah, for the foul. You got to play that one out. Largest lead for Wisconsin. Carson Edwards off the hot screen. Hit the front iron, and it is a foul. We've got a foul down low. And if that's half, it's his fifth. It is. That's the leadership we were talking about. Hap's been forced into with all the graduation that you're seeing right now. No, and you lose your guy. We're going to see what Wisconsin's made of. They're in good shape of five. I'm going to take another look here at this foul. And there's Hap. Doesn't really give Carson Edwards much space to land. You see down low, it is a grown man game. Going for that rebound. So half on the challenge of the shot, which has been a hallmark tonight for Wisconsin. Hands in faces, does foul Edwards. This has been a vintage Wisconsin defensive performance. All right, you're holding a team that's as powerful as this Purdue one to 49 points. Great job on the defensive end. Really a great game plan by Greg Gard. Second one good, one left. 22 tonight for Carson Edwards. Costly foul. Only worth two, though. And here comes Pritzel with a foul on Matthias. The three fouls on the court of Matthias is second. Well, we said early that maybe the historical energy in this building with Kaminsky and his crew could add a little to the Badgers tonight, and it seems to have done so. Talk about closing the door. Wisconsin making their free throws. They've also made five of their last six field goals. That's that's getting it done in winning time. Pritzel gets the bounce. 19 seconds to go. Carson Edwards has the screen. Edwards missed it short. Rebound Iverson. And Wisconsin can put it away. My, oh my, what a night for the Badgers. What a win this is going to be for Greg Gard's team. When you can now look at your guys and say, look at what we're doing. We can beat really good people. A team that's ranked six in the country. Just got to follow what we're doing. We got to believe. It's been a tough season. There's no question about that. You're playing a lot of young guys. There's a lot of guys out here that are going to be in the Wisconsin program for the next three, two or three years. So it's going to be so important for them Stay with what they've got. Great guard talked about it. We've changed the culture. We had to have a reset. And right now, this is a good old-fashioned Wisconsin win. Tip is good. Game over. Three in a row in the loss column for Purdue. And the Badgers rush the floor as they honor Frank Kaminsky. You get the feeling if Frank was closer to the court, he'd be there too. <laughs> no, I think it's fair to say that if Frank Kaminsky could come down from his suite and get in there, he would be right in the middle. Oh, actually, you know what? Here he comes. <laughs>
What a win for Wisconsin. Got to be happy for these kids. They had stuck with it all season. The slowest court rush for a superstar in history. But Frank's out there with his folk. What a win for the Badgers. And now Purdue. You get the feeling if Frank was closer to the court, he'd be there too. <laughs> No, I think it's fair to say that if Frank Kaminsky could come down from his suite and get in there, he would be right in the middle. Oh, actually, you know what? Here he comes. <laughs> what a win for Wisconsin. Got to be happy for these kids. They had stuck with it all season. The slowest court rush for a superstar in history, but Frank's out there with his folk. What a win for the Badgers, and now Purdue looks in the mirror and has lost three in a row. Well, it's going to be some soul circuit time for this Purdue team. You've lost three in a row, still so much to play for. You've got to right this ship, and you've got to right this ship fast. All close losses. Their total loss number is 15 in their five losses, but 57-53, Arizona, Arizona State next, but first back to the studio. We stay together. Um, you know, it's been a long season. We've dealt with a lot, and people are making excuses for us. But you know, we've this whole season we've stayed together. Uh, and you know what? It's it's all in the good times. We we'll have a good story to tell. Um, and a lot of people have given up on us, but we haven't given up on ourselves, and that's huge. It's just the belief in our guys. My voice is kind of gone from uh, <laughs> from the uh, celebration here, but it's belief in our guys because of how how we played early on in the season. We played ranked teams down to the wire. And we have had our bumps here lately, but we knew that if we play defense like that for 40 minutes, that we can beat anyone. This is Wisconsin basketball. This is how it's supposed to be. Um, you know, this is a dream come true. We're excited to be able to be here and you know give God all the glory. Very thankful to have the opportunity to play at this university. You guys didn't get the threes to go down the way you're used to, but you still hung in there. How'd you do it? Defense, guts, toughness, all the little things that coach has been preaching since day one that we've been lacking until this point. And you know, today we all rally together. We held each other accountable. We played for one another, and you know we wanted to represent Frank and get this one for him as well, just because of how good of a player and person he was, and how well he represented this university. Your first court stormman. What do you think? I like it. I like it. But hopefully, in my next four years, we won't have to storm the court. We'll be the don't want to be the underdog. So hopefully, flip it next time. Vince Edwards, top of the circle, hoisting up a three. It's no good. Haas the rebound, put back, good. It doesn't matter. The Badgers have won it. They have knocked off the Purdue Boilermakers, and we have ourselves a court storm at the Kohl Center. Guys, I've been here a long time, long time. And I know we've had our ups and a lot of downs. We're growing and figuring some things out. That is one of the best defensive efforts that this program has ever played, right there. You guys chased really well. You took care of the post really well. <laughs> took care of the ball really well. And what the <laughs> f Thursday night, so big that not one, but two Big Ten teams pulled off top 10 upsets. 
Hi there, glad to have you with us on the big show. Sean Morris and Mike Hall here. So you could lead your show with either right. one, right? We're gonna lead with the shocker of the upset in these top 10 games because Wisconsin, the only thing it had going for it in its matchup with Purdue was that Frank Kaminsky was coming back and that's a big deal because his number was getting raised to the rafters after the marvelous career that he had in Madison, including two Final Fours and a National Player of the Year. He got 44 raised up high. Here's what he said to the crowd. When I see that banner go up there, I don't think of myself. I think all my teammates who have been so supportive. Without them, you know, I don't know if I would have been the player that I was at this school and been the player that I could be here. So thank you guys from the bottom of my heart. Thank you. What a career he had, huh? Wonderful. And that was the beginning of a wonderful evening in Madison. <laughs> yes, it was. In the first half, the Boilermakers had some turnovers. Brevin Pritzel with the steal and then the layup. And then more from Pritzel, this time finding Brad Davison for the finish. Boilermakers had seven turnovers in the first half. This is the number six team in the country. Now, they do still have Carson Edwards, who was able to get a little bit of production for them offensively, but they were tied at halftime. And everything that Purdue was able to get, even when it was from Carson Edwards, they really had to struggle. Only seven assists on the night for the Boilermakers. In the second half, a little more from Edwards. In fact, the Boilermakers have the lead here. Carson stretches it to six. He had 22 on the day, but back came Wisconsin. Brad Davison. Oh, look at that! Looked to everyone like he was shooting it, but instead he found Khalil Iverson. Frank the Tank approves. Second half. Ethan Happ in the paint. Great move over Vincent Edwards. He had 15 points in the second half alone. Then Davison. Oh, the long two is good. And the Badgers are up by three. Half with two minutes to go. Backing down, Isaac Haas gets the roll. And Wisconsin gets the win. The fans storm the court, and the Badgers take it 57 to 53. Happ ends up with a double double of 21 and 12. The win of the season for Wisconsin. Meanwhile, for Purdue, they hit only four three pointers all game long. Four of 17 from the line, and only had 53 points total. Jay Wilson was in Madison for post game reaction. Greg Gard, when you play down in West Lafayette, Purdue won by 28. Why was tonight so different? We did a better job defensively. I think, you know, we've got a young group that's trying to figure things out. And sometimes when you get whacked by almost 30, it's a good lesson, good experience. And we, we were really good defensively tonight. We, hopefully we can shoot the ball better, especially the first half. But uh, give our kids a ton of credit. They've kept battling. They've, they've had to persevere through a lot this year, and I'm really proud of them. A lot of people have given up on us, but we haven't given up on ourselves. We still show up every practice, work as hard as we can, and it has been a struggle. Uh, you know, but all teams go through adversity. And we just had to stick together, play for one another, and we wanted to uh, win this one for Frank just because of how well he represented our university just as a player and as a person. So we want to do it for him and everyone who came before us as well. It was one of those games where you kind of, things weren't going your way, and you got to kind of, you got to grind it out. And, you know, for a while, um, you know, we did some good things, I thought, on the defensive end, obviously. Um, but offensively, we just never could get on track. Wisconsin came into the game 11 and 16. How did they beat a top 10 team? They out-toughed a team known for their toughness, and they were able to do that by having an inside-outside production. Even though they didn't knock down a lot of threes, this is a team in Wisconsin that has struggled from behind the arc. But the freshman, Brad Davison, kind of set the tone in the first half, able to stretch out Purdue. You see, again, this is made possible by a hustle play. You saw black jerseys reaching for it, a white jersey goes down and digs it out. And then on the ball reversal, Eifert is a little tardy, and then this started to set up the inside presence. If you allow one-on-one -on -one coverage with Ethan Happ, he is going to work you over, especially when he's able to catch the ball in that mid-post area or in the short corner, and he was able to get all the way to the rim, and that's some demonstrable emotion that you don't usually see 
from Ethan Happ. This has been a frustrating season for Happ for a number of reasons. His production hasn't waned. They haven't had the production on the floor, but this was an outstanding game by Wisconsin because if you put it in the grand scheme of things, who had more to play for? Was it Purdue or was it Wisconsin? Purdue trying to get back on the right track, but Wisconsin would have none of it. Started outside with Davison and then finished off inside with Happ. And something about their defense, too. This is a Purdue team that averages 82 points a game. They got only 53 on the night. So impressive all around for the Badgers. And again, it's the win of the year for them. Purdue, meanwhile, this is now three straight losses. Now, the first two were against top 10 teams in very close games. That was very understandable. This now makes it seem like there's got to be some red flags. Well, and the, it's kind of borne out in the stats, Mike, and the fact that they have been stagnant offensively, especially in this ball game in Madison. Seven assists on 19 made field goals. Now, that just leads you to believe that there's a lot of standing around, and you saw that. You compare that with uh, seven assists, 13 turnovers. This is a team, one of their benchmarks all year has been taking care of the basketball. Look, you don't, there's no need to grab the lifeboats in right, West Lafayette. Right. There, this is still an outstanding team that's going to have a lot of outstanding and winning basketball ahead of it. But as you watch this game tonight, you and I were talking about it. There was a lot of standing around on the offensive end of the floor. There wasn't the crisp ball movement. You mentioned the fact that four main threes from the Boilermakers, all of those came from Carson Edwards. So guys like Thompson, Matthias, Klein, no one scored from behind the arc. Haas was, able to, Haas was able to get some things going inside, but it was the stagnant on the offensive end of the floor because defensively, Purdue was pretty good. But taking care of the basketball and making Wisconsin work on the defensive end of the floor just wasn't there tonight for the Boilermakers. Three more games in the regular season. They can still win the Big Ten right. regular season. That's not done. But if you go back seven games, the last three were losses. The four before them were close, concerning wins. There definitely is something going on in West Lafayette that Matt Painter's got some work to do. Like we said, that was only one of two top 10 upsets on the day. Penn State at one point was up 30 on Ohio State. We'll show you how that went down. Plus, with a week and a half left in the regular season, Sean's going to tell you the five biggest games involving Big Ten teams still to come. Obviously, extremely happy for our guys, you know, with what they've had to grow through and the experiences they've had. They haven't always been positive. Um, but the persistence and perseverance to stick with it, to stay with the plan, to, as somebody wrote on the board after the game, trust the process, as I, they hear me say a gabillion times, um, and stay with it. And this group obviously has uh, taken some lumps, had a lot of learning experiences, but the only way you learn from adversity and learn how to handle it is to go through it, and that's how you force growth. And I think this group, obviously, tonight defensively, I've seen a lot of really good defensive efforts. This is probably ranks right up there uh, in terms of the job they did. They were engaged. They were, for the most part, right spot, right time. Um, you know, they've they've grown. They've improved, and that's an area that has been a point of emphasis forever. But uh, with this group, you, you have to get the experience in order to figure out what works and what doesn't work. And obviously, we saw a lot of what doesn't work at West Lafayette in West Lafayette, um, both from a defensive standpoint and how you do it how you need to take care of the ball and what that leads to. So I thought those two areas that have always been staples here, um, it was good to see those things be uh, be pretty good, th those couple things. Craig, you've talked a lot about just being good at times defensively but not consistent for 40 minutes. Um, was that the key tonight, just kind of every segment of the game, you just kind of stayed consistent on that end of the court? Yeah, I thought we, I thought we competed. At a pretty high level, in terms of we were we were physical, we were um, you know especially down that first half in front of me, I can tell how physical it is in the paint with guys, and I could tell guys were locked in. There was some bodies hitting, and uh, that told me mentally they were there, and we were for the most part right there on every chase. Um, you know, we we made a couple mistakes on the threes that they got in the first half, uh, that Carson got in the first half, but by and large we were we were pretty good and and where we needed to be and. And we needed to make a few more shots. Would have made the first half uh, a little better, but um, you know that's how how it is. The you know playing the upper echelon of that this league, you've got to play. You know you got to guard on, and you got to do it for 40 minutes. And um, it's a very typical Big Ten grinder. A little more on the defense. I can't remember at what point you put Iverson on Carson Edwards, but what did he do to specifically specifically to slow him down and? And can you run us through the play on the left wing where I think you're up four, Edwards has a three-pointer shot, and um, Khalil blocks it clean. Yeah. Um, 
you know, we had, I'd used Brad on him and went with a smaller lineup with the intent that we were more mobile, um, specifically to handle, you know, Vince Edwards is like another guard out there, so it gave us a little more mobility. Um, and, but obviously it makes us smaller uh, on the offensive end. So it, I, I flipped Khalil on him when I thought Brad was getting tired. I could tell it, it, in the timeout he was breathing pretty heavy and he had that look in his face. And he'll never tell me that he's tired. I have to make that decision. on. I ask guys and he'll never tell the truth. Um, on that regard, but uh, and, and plus the other thing, it puts a different look on him. It puts a, a little different, a longer guy on him, you know. And I haven't, uh, I haven't seen a three-point shot blocked in a critical time since Jordan Taylor blocked Jacob Poulins in the NCAA tournament. When we were playing Kansas State in terms of a, you know, a, a critical moment um, and a very similar, similar type of play. So that was, that was a big play. Obviously, there's a lot of big plays, but. Uh, um, I thought our perimeter people did a really good job on their perimeter guys. Coach, hosting a team like Purdue, I doubt your guys had to get up anymore. But did you think that Ethan had a little bit more of a jolt with Frank being in the building and kind of what this night meant to Frank? Well, it, that's that's obviously a question for them. I think the biggest thing was when you have that type of emotional event, that only lasts for about two minutes, and then you got to play. So um, the biggest thing is we needed to play better. You know, we need to be better defensively. We need to take care of the ball. We need to play better in longer stretches. We've done it in short spurts, um, but we haven't done it well enough. And, and part of that's the inconsistency comes when you have new faces on the block. And tonight we were as consistent defensively as we've been maybe all year. Um, and, and obviously I think we did just enough offensively and to um, to be able to get the, the victory. But, you know, I... I'm sure I know it means a lot to our players to have Frank and then not only Frank, but everybody else that was here. I mean, it's, it's like a who's who in the locker room. That's why I'm all wet. They all just dump water on me, including all the alumni. Um, but, uh, you know, it's good to have all those guys back, you know, and to be able to play like this uh, in front of them. is, is It's good for – obviously it sends a good message, and that's what my message was to the team. You want to say thanks? to Frank, you want to say thanks to all the alumni, the best way to show respect and give your thanks and your salute, go out and play really well. And I think they really, um, they honed in and were, like I said, engaged and um, connected for 40 minutes. You've, you've been asked about Ethan before. Sometimes in the first half he doesn't hit shots, right, whether he's rushing or probing too much. What was the difference tonight? Because in the second half he was much more effective, maybe going with his left hand more? Well, we, we looked at things with technology. We can look at all the shots and whatever we want at halftime and just trying to give him some advice on what to maybe take better angles, uh, work to get a better angle, maybe not try, excuse me, try to go op over him all the time, try to work an angle to, to uh, get a better sight line on the rim and, and obviously use the glass. But, uh, you know, he, he did. He, was, he finished his body, and you know, I can tell that when I get to the films, but in terms of body positioning and, and where he jumps towards. Does he jump out of bounds? Does he jump towards the square? Uh, I think he finished with his shoulder square more tonight and uh, did a good job of slowing down and taking his time in the second half. Coach, you went to Nate pretty early in the first half, and then for the rest of the game, it seemed like it was mostly the starters. Was that just a product of the way guys were playing, or, or was it a matchup issue? Or Well, they got two fouls in the first half, so he had to sit for a while. And then I was just jockeying, knowing that we were going to have to play small, or I I liked our matchups with him being smaller defensively. Um, so it was some jockeying there. And I, again, I keep asking guys in timeouts, how are they doing and who's on a roll, who's feeling well. Um, so it was more by what I saw out there. There was a couple times I think they, I don't know if they went, they didn't go with two bigs at all this game. But um, it's sometimes it's gut feel, sometimes it's look on their faces. Tonight, early, it was obviously Nate's foul trouble. Um, you know, we did, uh, they all contributed whatever way they can. Greg, what did you see out of the your team and, and the poise just to, to have a lead and to, to not lose it over those last few minutes and be in that position against a really, really good team? Well, we, we did a good job of taking care of the ball down the stretch. We were able to get to the free throw line. We made just enough of them. We made able to make enough plays. And then I think... You know, defensively, we were able to do some things um, and, and make you know life pretty tough for him at times. You know, we had the foul there at the end on the three point on, on Edwards shooting the three. Um, you know, that was probably the only 
mistake mistake that that uh, in terms of other than them just trying to make plays over the top of us and uh, so we just kept our poise. I mean, they didn't get rattled. They've been in enough of these, and hopefully, you over time, uh, younger guys figure out how important every possession is, and that's always something younger players and obviously newcomers struggle to not embrace it, but understand how important every possession is, um, that you can't let one or two or three slip away in the first half, how important they are and how they, they resonate throughout the game, and they can, you know, two possessions of bad defense or three possessions of bad offense can, can have an impact at any point in time, and we were pretty, pretty solid down the stretch. Um, Greg, after that first Purdue game, Brad Davison was really down on himself because he, he admitted he didn't play well. What what stands out from what he was able to do tonight, whether it was offense, finding guys open like the, the pass to Khalil for the dunk, or you know working on defense? Well, I think the one thing is he's getting a getting a better understanding. Even though he's playing out of position and playing with one arm, we have all heard that many times. But he did a, he's starting to really appreciate how important valuing the ball is. How important every like I just mentioned every possession. So being a point guard, it's a lot better to have one turnover than seven. Like we, like he had it in West Lafayette. So, um, you know, and defensively, he went back and forth between a couple guys. Um, I'm sure he'll sleep, sleep well tonight because he's pretty exhausted. Uh, but he, uh, you know, he's just he's a, a extremely tough competitor. He he practices exactly how he plays. Um, you know, he never wants to come out of the game. So, um, you know, I'm glad he's on my team. I know that, and we'll have him for you know a few more years yet. But uh, you know, he's just he's learning and growing. He made a couple mistakes, um, but he's he's resilient. He keeps bouncing back.